welcome to this video and this is a uh, an introduction and the main points about the meningitis in children let's introduce uh, meningitis meningitis is an inflammation of the membranes that cover the brain and spinal cord known as the leptomeninges this inflammation can disrupt the normal function of the central nervous system meningitis can be caused by various pathogens most commonly bacteria and viruses and fungal causes are very rare bacterial meningitis is generally more severe and can lead to serious complications or death if not treated suddenly and cautiously aseptic meningitis often caused by viruses refers to cases where bacterial cultures are negative this this type is typically less severe but can still be quite distressing particularly in children the common bacterial causes of meningitis have shifted significantly over time largely due to the widespread use of vaccines before the introduction of vaccines bacteria like haemophilus influenza type b or hib streptococcus pneumonia and neisseria meningitis were the leading causes but with the vaccination programs h influenza type b and streptococcus pneumonia infections have declined dramatically nowadays neisseria meningitis remains a leading cause especially in older children and the teenagers in neonates the most common bacterial causes are group b streptococcus often transmitted during childhood as well as e coli and listeria monocytogenes viral meningitis is more common than bacterial meningitis but it's generally less severe the most common viruses responsible for meningitis are introviruses such as coxsackie virus and ecovirus these viruses are spread through fecal oral transmission and are more common in the summer and fall months especially in temperate regions other viruses such as the herpes simplex virus mumps and eb virus can also cause meningitis and these are less common children particularly infants and school age kids are more susceptible due to their still developing immune systems immunocompromised individuals are also at increased risk The clinical presentation of meningitis can vary depending on the child's age and the causative pathogen. In bacterial meningitis, symptoms often develop uh, rapidly over a few hours to a couple of days. Classic signs include fever, headache and neck stiffness, particularly in older children and adolescents. Uh, however in infants and younger children these signs may not be as clear cut instead in infants may present with uh, irritability poor feeding lethargy or a bulging fontanelle the soft spot on the baby's head so without uh, prompt treatment meningitis can lead to serious complications such as seizures shock or coma petechial or purpuric rashes especially with neisseria meningitis infections are also a worrying sign in meningitis diagnosing meningitis requires prompt evaluation with the key diagnostic test being a lumbar puncture or spinal tap to analyze the csf in bacterial meningitis the CSF typically shows a high WBC count, elevation protein levels and low glucose levels. Viral meningitis on the other hand will show an increase in WBC but the glucose level is typically normal. Blood cultures also help identify the causative organism especially in bacterial cases. PCR is an important diagnostic tool for viral meningitis. because it allows the rapid detection of viral genetic material brain imaging like a ct or 
MRI scan may be performed in certain cases to rule out increased intracranial pressure or other complications before doing a lumbar puncture. Treatment of bacterial meningitis must be initiated promptly to improve outcomes. Impact antibiotic therapy is usually started immediately even before the results of diagnostic tests are available. This typically includes a combination of a third generation cephalosporin such as cefetriazone or cefotaxime with vancomycin to cover for drug resistant streptococcus pneumoniae. For neonates, ampicillin is added to the a treatment regimen to provide coverage for Listeria monocytogenes, which is a significant cause of meningitis in neonates. The specific antibiotic treatment can be tailored once the causative organism is identified. The duration of treatment depends on the organism, but it usually lasts between 5 to 14 days. Supportive care is crucial in managing children with meningitis. In some cases, corticosteroids like dexamethasone may be administered, particularly in hemophilus influenza type B meningitis, to reduce the risk of hearing loss, which is a common complication. Continuous monitoring is necessary to manage complications like seizures, which occur in up to 30% of cases. Syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion or SIDH can lead to low sodium levels and requires fluid assessment. Other uh, severe complications include shock and coma. Uh, despite aggressive treatment, bacterial meningitis has a significant mortality rate significant mortality rate of around 10 to 15 percent and up to 30 percent of survivors may suffer long-term effects such as hearing loss, seizures and cognitive delays. Prevention of meningitis is largely based on vaccination. Vaccines against Hemophilus influenza type B, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Neisseria meningitis have significantly reduced the incidence of bacterial meningitis. These vaccines are a part of routine childhood immunization schedules and are highly effective in preventing severe disease. Additionally, chemoprophylaxis is recommended for close contact of individuals with meningococcal meningitis. Medications like rifampin or ciprofloxacin are used to reduce the risk of secondary cases, particularly in family members or others in close contact with the patient. Good hygiene practices and infection control measures such as hand washing and avoiding contact with infected individuals also play a role in preventing the spread of viral causes of meningitis. Thank you so much for